So it's explained that the shofar connects us back to four big events. Cool. What are they? The Brit Mila. Hmm? The Brit Mila. The Brit Mila. Like, when our friend said, um, he didn't do it, but he saw a cat. Great. Akedas Yitzchak. Yes. Okay. The Akedat Yitzchak, the binding of Isaac. Okay. What else? When else do we have a shofar? Well, there's one more that we had, and there's one we will have. Oh, when Mashiach comes. Okay, great. When Mashiach comes, there's going to be a doo doo. Okay. There also one in the like in the temple. Yeah, the Yericho. Yes. Okay. Yericho. 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 Yericho is another event, not the one we're mentioning, but totally right. And there are also shofarot in the temple, not the event I'm thinking of. There was a mountain. Moshe. Moshe on the mountain. And then there were a blitz. And it's a bear. And then there was a <laughs> Matan Torah. At the time of Matan Torah, at the time of the giving of the Torah, there was the sound of the shofar went out and reverberated throughout the world. Okay, so we've got Akedas Yitzchak, we've got Matan Torah, and we have the Geula, like when Mashiach comes. I'm going to tell you a really funny story about Mashiach. So I used to work in an insurance office, and I shared a wall with this older gentleman. He was like eighty something or other. Okay. And he would do his computer business and I would do my computer business. So one fine day, I'm like sitting at the computer, I'm like doing my little work, and all of a sudden I hear doo -doo! like super loud. Okay, like the wall is shaking. And I immediately go, Michelle's here. <laughs> and then I was like, now what? And I realized I didn't know what I was supposed to do then. I was like, do I finish this invoice? Do I call my husband? I feel like he would know. Should I pick the kids up from gone? Is gone, like I didn't know what to, and then I was like, my mother-in-law is coming back from the dead this afternoon and I don't have anything to feed her in the house. These were my thought processes. I was immediately like, I do not have a roast. Cause I feel like if somebody's like, you know, coming back from the dead, like they deserve a roast. This all passed through my head in about 10 seconds as I'm listening to this giant reverberating shofar. And then I, like, within a few seconds later, hear, Shvarim Trua, Tekiah, Shvarim Trua. There was this video called by the Fountainheads. It was called Dip Your Apple in the Honey. It was cool on YouTube, like, a couple years ago. Okay, and the beginning of that video is some dude playing the shofar, and my wall neighbor, who was 80 years old, had his desktop turned up to like 11 on the YouTube video, so when he opened the video, it was like, Burr -da! and so I thought Mashiach came. And then I, it was, it was a very impactful moment for me, so I started keeping a roast in my freezer, which is the Mashiach roast. It is, should Mashiach come, I can throw it in the crock pot and therefore feed my, my in-laws when they roll up here. These are my, these are my thoughts. Okay, so we've got the shofar for Akedah Sitzhak, and it's exactly what you said, right? As Avraham is putting his son on the Mizbeach, right, he's lifting up the knife. God calls out and says, Avram, Avram, don't touch him. Lift up your eyes, and he looks, and he sees a ram caught in the thickets, and he ends up slaughtering the ram in place of his son. And according to the Midrash, that ram's horn, the horn of that ram, ended up becoming the shofar that was blown at Matan Torah, and also the shofar that will be born, will be blown for Mashiach. Okay? So now, the question is, what are the connection between these events? Okay, besides, there's a shofar. What connection is there between Akedus Yitzchak, Matan Torah, and the Geula? Hashem is speaking to us. Okay, great. Hashem is speaking to us. The 
It's all of when we like became a nation. I like times. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I don't know. There's a change in status, right? There's a we're becoming something, right? Yeah. Like our hair's hairstyle. You know what's going on? Like yeah. The we are we hairsy. You feel like that? Mm-hmm. To the. Until it comes to Mashiach. Okay, so it's like a it's like a dress rehearsal for Mashiach. Okay, so Rav Shlomo Tversky, and this was given to me by Sarah Esther Samuels. So thank you, Sarah Esther Samuels. She gave me this piece from Rav Shlomo Tversky. What he said is the connection between these three things is chirut, freedom. Okay, so the last one's easy, right? The Geula comes, we're all free right? We're free from Galus, finally, right? The end of the exile, complete freedom from the Jewish people, freedom. At Matan Torah, we were gaining our actual freedom. We left Egypt, right? But we didn't become truly free until we finished the process by getting the Torah. We didn't become really free people until we got the Torah, because within Torah is true freedom. Okay, but where's the freedom in a Kedis Yitzhak? It's like binding us together as a nation. Like, I feel like it was like the baby of the nation. Like, this is, I don't know. I'm just thinking of like, I don't know what I'm going for. <laughs> I don't know. When we overcome his nature, like, it's like everybody has a mission. You know, when you get a change, you are the middles, it's like, you know, it's like everything, you know, like, it's like to study all Torah. So when you are able, you have strength to overcome the, you know, your nature, whatever, the negative of the truth, the qualities, you become like elevated or something. Okay, so here's what Rav Tversky says about it. He says, you're on track. What he says is, Avram Avinu, his greatest challenge was a Kedis Yitzchak. His greatest challenge. He had 10 of them, and the hardest one was Akedis Yitzchak because it totally went against his nature. No father, no parent would ever want to put their child on the Mizbeach. It goes against nature, it goes against your natural feelings. But even more than that, Avram Avinu had to go against his entire understanding of the world. For up until now, his main Mita, what's Avram's Mita? Chesed, exactly. Love, kindness, warm fuzzies. And his understanding of God was the same thing. His whole relationship with Hashem was built on chesed. And then all of a sudden, Hashem says, I want you to do the absolute opposite of everything I've ever told you. And what Avram Avinu did was he rose to do it without a second thought. He didn't confine himself or his relationship to God based on his understanding of how things worked. He was willing to go beyond his conception of himself, his conception of his mission, and what he understood. And he was willing to expand. And when he expanded himself, to be open to whatever God's will was, however it looked, that was true freedom. The ability to shed our own restrictions and limits of ourselves and what we see our mission is, and instead give ourselves over to what God's will is, however that may look, is absolute freedom. When we had the shofar come from Akedas Yitzchak, it was the idea of, I am not running the show. And my conception of what this has to look like, it isn't the definition of what this is. If I can let it go, if I can expand beyond what I conceive God's will, what I conceive God's plan, what I conceive the mission to be, and let go of the limits I put on myself, and the limits that I think I put on God, and instead say, whatever your will is, that's what I'm here to do. 
They talk a lot in 12 Steps about his will, not mine, about letting God run the show. And it's really funny. Like, we, we often think we're like, no, 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 this is what it's going to look like, right? Like, I've got this. Like, let me tell you Hashem. No, 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 no. It's going to be like this. It's going to be like this. And I'm going to do this. And you're going to do this. And it's going to be like this. And then we get, when it comes up and it's like, no, we go, and I'm not plenty. Because I had my plan. Avram Avinu should have just sat down in his tent and been like, put my son on an altar. No. No. That's not what it's supposed to look like. That's not what it's supposed to be. But his greatest challenge was saying, I don't care what it's supposed to look like. I don't care what it's supposed to be. Whatever you want is what it is. Right? We're on a bicycle built for two. We are not in the steering seat. But we sure think we are. Have you ever seen a bicycle built for two? It has handlebars on the back. They don't do a lot. But man, we're back there being like, I'm a turn. And God's like, we're really not turning right now. You're like, no, no, no. I don't want this challenge. This isn't the challenge I signed up for. I signed up for that challenge. I signed up for this life. But if we let go of what we expected was supposed to be, or what we think we're capable of, what we think we can do, no, 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 God, I, you sent the wrong challenge. I'm, I'm sorry to inform you, but I am currently not capable of this challenge that you have given me. So, And God's like, if I send it, you can do it. True freedom, the sound of the shofar is the true freedom of let go of the limitations that you put the sound of Matan Torah is take the Torah, because true freedom comes from embracing that. The sound of Mashiach is the sound of all of the limitations and all of the shade and all of the things that are hiding the truth will now fall away. It's all about freedom to truly embrace Hashem and truly embrace your mission. And that's what Rosh Hashanah is. We're not crowning Hashem king because he has an inferiority complex and he needs us to tell him he's awesome. We're crowning Hashem king because we need to realize that that's the only way that we can live our fullest potential. When we go into a new year, it's new year, new you. Right? Hashtag new year, hashtag new you. Right? It's you without the limits you put on you. It's you going into the fullest and freest version of who you are by embracing who Hashem created you to be and letting him run the show and not saying, I can't, but saying, I, if you sent it, then I must be able to. Mm -hmm.